Yo, number one show on late night. That's right. You know what it is. Mm -hmm. Illustrious guests every time. They the, just the, keep the getting best. bigger and bigger. Today we have astrophysicist, yeah. author, Bronx legend, yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thanks for having me, man. Yo, Thanks for coming through. Man. You, are, you, are, you are the only, or probably the most notable astrophysicist from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. So of course we got to have you on. You know what I'm saying? We wow, astrophysicist from the Bronx. Best known astrophysicist from the Bronx. Yeah. <laughs> It's a Venn diagram. Okay. I'm glad I got I got at least that. Venn diagram that says Neil. Do you hang with any other astrophysicists from the Bronx? Or not really, not no. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the only one I know from the Bronx. Yeah, so but yeah, yeah. How's that? When's uh, you still you ever go back to the Bronx and kick it? Or? Every now and then. Every now and then. If I was there a few days ago on the rooftop of the building that I grew up in. What building? That's why uh, it's called Skyview Apartments. At the time, I didn't even know. I wasn't even thinking. It was named Sky Skyview. Sky that's just a word, right? Yeah. When you're a kid, it's just the name of the building. Now I said, oh, that's like sky view. Yeah. And so it's a tall building, mm -hmm. above 20 stories in the Bronx, and hauled my telescope up there mm -hmm. when I was a kid, and it was just, I was just there communing with the cosmos. Oh, so it was early in the game. You, you have the telescope early. I, I go back. Like, I go yeah, way yeah. back. This is not some adult thing for me. Okay. This, this is, I go, about it. I'm, yeah, You've that's been about it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Plus, I'm native of the Bronx, so mm -hmm. Yankee, I'm a native Yankee day. fan. Oh, here. You know. It's just what it is. So you use your telescope to watch the games? <laughs> Like, hey, that was a strike. That was a pitch. Yes, <laughs> All right, you have a new book out called Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. Yeah, yeah. If you're in a hurry and you like anything about the universe, it's for you. Explain everything about the universe to me in 30 seconds. I can do that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> just, just give, me the, is, just give me the broad topic. It, it is bigger than you. It's older than you. It is everything more than whatever you thought you were. Yes. So this is a great demotion of your ego. Mm -hmm. But then you learn that we are deeply and fundamentally connected to the cosmos. Okay. We are connected atomically, molecularly. We, we, our fate is intertwined with the fate of the universe. That's what I said to my wife when I was like trying to bag her, like, <laughs> Did it work? Yeah, yeah. Got four kids. Don't got... <laughs> I was gonna say, give me a full report in the morning, and we'll find out. Oh, the new cosmic rap. So, so, um, yeah, I think the universe is vast and old, mm -hmm. and we are not only in the universe. The universe is in us, and that has been known for some time. This is the tracing of the particles in our body mm -hmm. to the lives of stars that manufactured those atoms and scattered them across the galaxy, enabling our star system, the solar system, to form with planets, and on at least one of those planets, life. This is a cosmic perspective. Bruh. And you asked me to explain 30 seconds, I'm sorry, it took 45 seconds. No. Wow. Yo, bruh. Wow. Yo. I'm smacked. Damn. <laughs> you asked. I'm just, is, yo. I'm just chilling here. Also, and you gotta, you gotta take me all day. I mean, yeah, I, I, like it, I like it, I like it, I like it. And at the time, I was wondering, I was like, how much of this has Jaden Smith Street bitten? I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But What's you know, the most interesting fact right now that you know about the universe that you tell people to like, that to you is so impressive? Uh, there are many, but I, I, let me let me give you a cop out answer. You right, ready? Right. It's not. It's, this is not the most interesting fact. This is the most interesting thing to think about, and that is, might we not be smart enough to even know what question to ask on the frontier of cosmic discovery? Not only that, could there be a question we don't even know yet? that will arise only after we have moved the frontier forward that much further. Mm. Enable you to stand in a new place, right. to see new questions. Those are the questions I want to know about. So, so it's like you gotta Nicole unlock this character. character. Unlock, unlock that to get to that. To this, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, That's how I think about moving forward. Was, yeah, of course there are questions today. What is dark matter? What is dark energy? Yeah. And we could, we, could, we could focus on that and say, that is the big question today. But I'm thinking, you know, as, as the area of our knowledge grows, mm -hmm. so too does the perimeter of our ignorance. Right. And it's that perimeter that any research scientist is standing on. Mm -hmm. And it's always the next question you care about, not even the one that you're in the middle of answering now. Damn. Oof. Who runs science, you or Bill Nye? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and you can curse on the show, so you can be like, yo, motherfucker, <laughs> my, my, I run bro, stop running shit. Yeah. You, ever, you ever see him and no, some of his formulas are too close to home? Here like, you yo, go. No, no, here you go. Yo, back up. I'll say two things. First, I've been asked this. You didn't, I'm gonna tell you. I've been asked, who would win in a cage match? Me or Bill Nye. You fuck him up because I heard you wrestle in high school. Yes. Okay. Shout out to Bronx Science. Yeah, I, it was, though it was Bronx Science, the Bronx High School yeah, Science. I went to do still, it then. Still. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, y'all so. kicked our ass all the time. <laughs> y'all took all our lunch money. We had to walk past your school. 6,000 boys go to that school yeah. and hear all these nerd kids walking by. <laughs> It was like a shooting gallery. And <laughs> it's like, this is my lunch money for today, tomorrow, and Friday. Listen, shout out to all the North Face jackets. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the what jazz was taken. What year did you graduate? Oh, one. Oh, one. So it's already co-ed by then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. So it even guys. So it was even right, more imagine twice as many yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. So and, and Tracy Towers was across the street. Just to be clear, yeah. the Bronx High School of Science is on the same block as DeWitt Clinton High School. Okay? <laughs> and and you have to walk past. D with Clinton High School to, yes. to get to this school, yeah. the Bronx High School. So I'm just saying. Uh, but anyhow, I was a I was a geek jock, okay. right? So I was captain of my high school's wrestling team, and no, and I plus I wanted to be Bruce Lee right. back then because that was the era, right? So I I thought a lot about martial arts. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, you know, grab the pebble from my hand. Yeah. Uh, don't try that on me because you won't even see it happen. Okay. Oh, I'm just challenge. I'm just challenge. Yo, <laughs> you got Tyson to talk his I'm fight, talking, I totally smacked this down. <laughs> so wait, wait. So, so all I'm saying is, because of this background, plus I outweigh him by 100 pounds. Oh, he's yeah. A, this yeah, not, yeah, it's yeah. not even a. Kind, you don't even go in a cage. Yeah. Just say, just let this. Let's agree that that's how this is going to go. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were all on Gilligan's Island, Bill Nye is the one you want to be the professor. Because he would then make the coconut radio and right, whatever. Right, right, right. That's he, his thing. That's, he could do, he would know how to put all that together and save us all. Oh. And I'd just be saying, oh, look at that pretty star at night. <laughs> 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 I'll keep you entertained. I think, that's, oh. I think that's a planet that no, might have water. I know, right, right. <laughs> I could do that and we all have a cool night. Oh, uh, so no knocking out a coconut. Ultimately, you want to get your ass off the island and that would be Bill Nye, no question about it. But he's oh. a good friend, love him to death. Shout out to Bill, yo. Yeah. That's good. You spend a lot of time at universities as a student, as a yeah. teacher. Do you ever get tired of, not learning, but the whole school, academics? Academia? Yeah, no, I'll tell you why. Because the entire construct is, is, it is food for the curious. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Think about people, I'm sure we know, who the last day of school, be it high school or college, they'll run down the steps, toss their notes in the air and say, no more school. Yeah. yeah. Like, what are you celebrating? Your only job up until now was to learn. Right. That's, like now, me as a parent. Yeah. That's, that, yeah. that's been your only job. And now you are discarding this. So for me, I've been, I was a curious kid and I kept the curiosity into adulthood. Mm -hmm. And we call, we have a word for people who kept the curiosity into adulthood. They're called scientists. Uh, what does a kid do? Oh, what is that? What, what yeah. is that? How, How does, does that work? Can I, I ignite that? And, yeah. well, let me mix this together. As adults, we just do that in a little, uh, as a, an adult scientist, mm -hmm. we just do the same thing kids do, but in a more organized way. Right. So, so you're a scientist. scientist. Oh, shit, yeah, this is science, right? Have you ever had uh, Vienna sausages? Long ago, except I, I, I stopped eating them when I noticed that the Vienna Boys Choir sing in the soprano key. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, let me stop eating the Vienna sausage. Hey. Hey. Oh. I have to go pump my stomach. Because <laughs> yeah. I asked, where do these Vienna sausages come from? Yeah. Mm. That's all. Listen. Why do you have Vienna sausages on the table here? Why don't more other shows have Vienna sausages? <laughs> oh, good answer. Okay, all right. There is a planet, possibly, where this table exists without Vienna sausages. Uh, or a universe in yeah. which this is all happening, but minus the Vienna Yo, sausages. Yo, you know what I think? Or even in worse. In the multiverse. There's a table, and we're made of Vienna sausages, and there's little people in the can. That would be really that's freaky. <laughs> Yo, dude, that's fucked up. <laughs> don't, stop, just, don't even you go there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what fucks me up all the time? <laughs> We're on the edge. We're all on the edge of the can. Looking out. Don't eat me. Yo, you're next, Neil.
No. That's, that's the nightmare. <laughs> that's the that's the, the carnivore's nightmare. Mm. Just to be eaten to be by, by something that you, you that you've been eating your whole, whole life. life. You know what fucks me up all the time what? when I'm sitting on my couch at 2 a.m. doing brain exploding bomb rips? Time travel. Yeah. Is that a real thing? Can it exist? Can yeah, well, yeah, you can go forward in time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you just can't come back to where you were. So you, you go into space at a, at a high speed. Time will tick more slowly for you. You can spend 10 years in space, come back, and we would have all aged 100 years and would have long forgotten about you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, so, we can, so, so. So wait, so I, what if I go to space for like five months? No, you, and okay. if you go really fast and do that? Yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on how fast, but. Uh, in the example I just gave, five months is not, you'll come back maybe, I don't know, I have to do the math, but, you know, 30 minutes. I'm just trying to get some time off, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Do a lot of work. No, you are still living your five months. If everyone else is moving faster than you, you'll look back and everything is, is at a different pace. The so, so the freaky part is if you go back in time. Yeah. So Hawking, I think, has a sensible idea. Mm -hmm. It's called the time travel conjecture. There's no evidence for this, but it just kind of makes sense that backwards time travel may be impossible because if we send you back in time and prevent your parents from meeting one another, then you would not have been born to be sent back in time to prevent your parents from meeting, meeting one another. Bruh. Whoa. I thought you were gonna say like then I had to play like Johnny Be Good on a guitar. <laughs> and like my mama kissed my mom. And your picture disappeared. Yeah, you know wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so 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 consider that in the movie The Terminator, yeah. he didn't have to go back and kill everybody. Right. He just had to prevent him from meeting. Just yeah. prevent or have them have sex ten minutes later. In a different, oh, and a yeah. different, it'd probably be the same egg, but a different, different sperm, sperm fertilized as a different person. This is what I love. When you do this, wait, wait, on but, Twitter, then, but then it wouldn't be a movie, right? Wait, I, wait, wait, he's got he's to be the Terminator. Yeah. What? You do this on Twitter, like a movie will come out, and you will just. I know. Lame I, know. I stop. I stop. I love it. You Why don't you do that anymore? No, people, people got really pissed off. No, no, no. They need the action. They need that. They need the action. No, no. Hey, no. They need it. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, when when the Force Awakens, Star Wars came out, I said. I love me some BB-8, but, but it is a smooth rolling spherical metal ball, and it would skid uncontrollably on sand. Ooh, and Reddit was like, ah! I said this, and people said, shut the fuck up, why are you? <laughs> Time Magazine had a full page web title say, how Neil deGrasse Tyson tried to completely ruin Star Wars. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm no. deeply unappreciated in this exercise. <laughs> so I don't need to do this. Right. These are thoughts I'm having anyway. I'm just sharing them. That's all. I'm just sharing them. You don't yeah, want you to have, have them. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll keep them to myself. But like, say you're in. I don't need. I don't need to. Look at what you're doing. But I'm, if you're in a movie theater and you see something, I'm thinking it. You're, oh, you're not. You're just thinking it. You're like, yeah. Oh no 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 no. I will just acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. I don't judge it. Oh, you're it's not like it, fake. No, no, it's just it, everything is fake. <laughs> Star Wars, no. nothing. No, I'd be fake, 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 fake. No, there's nothing real in Star Wars. Just stop, stop right here. Mm -hmm. So, but I can enjoy a movie yeah. once I know in advance that there's nothing real yeah, to it. Suspension of disbelief. That's right. Huh? Nice. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. A, another movie you had to really suspend your disbelief, even though many people didn't think so, was Armageddon. Yeah. There was that that movie violated more known laws of physics per minute than any other movie that has ever been produced. Was that the movie they were like trying to drill ben at Affleck the end? What do you mean was that? You know what movie this is? No, because there, there were two. There were two. There were two. One was a good one. Yes. And one was a, one was the one with Bruce Willis saving the world. Mm -hmm. You're thinking of Deep Impact, which yes. had good science in it. Oh. And here's you know, how you tell you how you know it had good science. In Deep Impact, the asteroid that's going to take us out uh -huh. hits the ocean. Okay. 70% of Earth's surface is ocean. True. That's where you're most likely going to hit. Right. You still get to destroy New York, but this time you do it with a tsunami. Oh. Okay? What's the... Like, wait, wait, wait. Okay. So now, in, in Armageddon, what do they do? The asteroid bits come, and one hits the Chrysler building, mm -hmm. decapitates <laughs> it, and that piece continues, goes through the front door of Grand Central Terminal, and hits the clock in the middle. The, the, the asteroids in... In, in Armageddon had GPS locators on it. <laughs> blow cool shit up. <laughs> <The> blow cool shit <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you're made in the middle of nowhere, that's not interesting. Yeah. Right. What's so the just most, don't get me started. What's the most scientifically Hold me accurate? back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get my man started. No, 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 don't get him out It's out of here. He's still wilding. <laughs> so speaking of sci-fi and yeah. you know, action, whatever, what's the most scientifically accurate uh, 
sci-fi or action movie? Okay, I would say recent memory is yeah. The Martian. The Martian? The Martian. Okay. And there's some stuff he had to fudge just to so that he had his full story. Mm -hmm. I'll, give, I'll give him that. Okay. I'll turn, I'll say, do it right. because so much else was done correctly. Andy Andy Weir is the yeah. is the uh, the um, uh, the author of the book, mm -hmm. and he, he told me later because mm -hmm. I had him on my radio show Star Talk. He told me later. He said, "Yeah, you like the plug." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he he said when he was writing the story. He was trying to imagine that I was looking over his shoulder, double checking what he's doing. Because <laughs> wow, he didn't want too. me tweeting his stuff out after the fact. Shit is Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> so he, so, so whatever is the force that worked with him, because he was an engineer, mm -hmm. uh, he put as much accurate science in that as possible. And that was a movie where science was a character unto itself. In fact, in that movie, science, the word, the noun, became science, the verb. When Bat Damon said, I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Uh -huh. And here's a movie where all the suspense, the love, the anxiety, the anticipation, normally filtered through interpersonal interactions. Yeah. In that movie, it flowed through the science, technology, engineering, and math of his attempts to not die. All the suspense was, will he figure this out? Right. Ah. Will will this explode? Will he not suffocate? Will he not die? And in fact, I never thought I'd say this. They had one a scene where the rescue astronauts are coming and and they're touching the screen of the child the, and the little child on Earth. Mm -hmm. Will they come back? Will they? Not? I'm saying, can you hurry that up, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's normally the most tender moment right. in the thing, right? Yeah. Looking back at your at your kid. Mm -hmm. Okay, I said I got to get back to Matt Damon see if he's gonna die. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so that's that one. I definitely. The and Interstellar was good too. And they knew it because the co executive producer is a colleague of mine, a professor of physics mm -hmm. at Caltech. He became co executive producer and he wrote a companion book to the movie called The Science of Interstellar. Last question <laughs> Favorite member of the Wu Tang Clan? Oh, I, no, uh, the Jizza. Oh. Oh, oh all right. Nice. I like that. Right? Like, I mean, how could it not have be that? Yeah. Oh, the genius. Yeah, duh. Yeah. Thank you. Duh. Yeah. duh. duh. <laughs> Put it together. <laughs> Can I tell you something about yes. your rainbow? Yes. Tell Just us a about little the rainbow. bit. Of, okay. Just, I see. I told him. I was like, yo, he's gonna, he's gonna actually the rainbow. Okay. Okay. So actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know if you knew this, but a rainbow is not a thing. It is an optical effect okay. of light and raindrops. raindrops. So, so, so if you see a rainbow, that is a different rainbow from what this person who's standing next to you sees. Everybody sees their own rainbow. And that's why, oh. hold on, that's why you can never walk to the side of a rainbow and see it at an angle. Every rainbow you've ever seen has been broadside to you because it is your private rainbow. And, and so wait, wait, so now what that means is since you can't run up to the base of the rainbow, mm -hmm. isn't that a great place to hide a pot of gold? Is that, is that, which you want your rainbow to say? Um, I, maybe it's too many words, we can shorten it, but it would be in life and in the universe, it is always best to keep looking up. <laughs> The best y'all. You know what I'm saying? Where's the wisdom? Woo! Yeah! You are watching the Jesus and Miro YouTube channel. So subscribe, it's click the buttons, us. all the buttons right here. This is the real YouTube shit. You know what I'm saying? Out here. Gang, gang. Squad.